Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Rama, and in today's video, I'll be showcasing the five most overpriced, overrated, and expensive vehicles being sold to you that just aren't worth the price at all. Starting off, we have the Laser. I love the Laser. It's a fun jet to fly, it's got great mobility, fantastic maneuverability, and you can get one at the military base for absolutely free. You can see I'm right in front of a randomly spawning Laser, and if I were to drive my way throughout the military base we can see oh look there's another laser oh and continuing through oh look there's another laser literally anywhere you go in the military base you can find lasers almost anywhere here's a laser here's another laser there's even one inside of the hangar if you simply purchase a hangar at the military base you can go inside the military base whenever you want and take a laser out without ever getting a wanted level on you or worrying about being blown up essentially what that means means is instead of spending 6.5 million dollars on a jet that you literally can't upgrade you can just i don't know go inside your hangar and uh, get one for literally free so yeah the laser is not only one of the most expensive vehicles in the game but it is literally a flat waste of money Next up, we have three massive planes. We have the Volatil, we have the RO-86 Alkanost, and finishing off the Bombushka. I'm putting all of these in the exact same number four position because they're literally all the same, each costing around three plus million dollars and being literally useless to everybody that owns one. The last time I've pulled out a Bombushka, I cannot tell you. The last time I've pulled out any of these two jets, yeah, I, I didn't even know I owned the 86 until I needed it for today's video. These jets are all a waste of time, a waste of money, and uh, I just would never suggest to purchase any of them, so that's why they all fit into the number four position. Next up, we break into the most expensive sports car available in the entirety of Grand Theft Auto Online, the Agarati Itali RSX. The reason this vehicle is so dang expensive is because it features an incredible top speed over 135 miles per hour. That's crazy fast. However, it comes at a pretty big downside, literally. $3.5 million to get without the trade price and $2.6 million even with the trade price. That is ridiculous expensive, especially when you realize that the Ocelot Pariah is only $1.4 million. The Ocelot Pariah features the same amount of seats. They're both two-seaters, and they're both in the exact same class as sports cars. Not only that, but the Ocelot Pariah features the same top speed with much better handling. It's literally just a better car. And also, I personally think the Ocelot Pariah looks better. I mean, frontally, the RSX is an absolutely beautiful car. And side on, I also think it looks really nice. Unfortunately, I think the back is kind of hideous, I'm not gonna lie. I just really don't like the back design of the RSX. I think the Praia looks really nice on the back because it's kind of based off a of Jaguar. So, yeah, I'm gonna be completely real. Apart from if you have a lot of money and you just want to get the RSX, sure, go ahead. But, if you're a newer player just don't buy one. I mean, the Apraya does everything the RSX does, and it's got a heck of a lot more customization. So, that's my view on it. In the number two slot, we break into the Kanjali, a tank that looks sick and does have some usefulness, but not for a $4 million price tag. Even with the trade price, you're going to get it for about $3 million, which still just isn't worth it. First of all, it's pretty expensive to upgrade this vehicle, and once you fully upgraded it, there's really not a whole lot to do. The problem is, sure, a tank in reality is super fun, but you just don't have a lot of use cases. First of all, it's really dang slow, only going at a top speed of around, what, 40-ish miles per hour? So if you wanted to get from point A to point B pretty fast, you're not going to be doing that in the Kanjali. Second of all, it can't even survive as many explosions as, for example, the Insurgent Pickup Custom, the APC, or even the Night Shark. So it's a tank that can't survive as many explosions as freaking normal, like, armored vehicles, which makes absolutely no sense. As well, we're in a world of flying vehicles. The Oppressor Mark II, the Deluxo, even the Scram, Jet, or just list any jet like the new Raiju, the Hydra, Laser, Rogue, all of these feature explosive machine guns, and they absolutely annihilate the Kanjali. And still, one of the easiest ways to deal with the Kanjali is literally pull out the Savage, which is a helicopter that features an OG explosive machine gun that can blow this tank up in about eh, 10 
like bursts of rounds, which is like one second of fire. It's pretty dang insane. Overall, the Kanjali, it's just, it's cool. And a lot of people always want to get tanks because it's a tank. It's got armor and all this. But in reality, it's just really not that good of a vehicle. I personally think that if Rockstar wants to make the Kanjali really good, all they need to do is put a missile lock on jammer. Literally just putting a missile lock on jammer would make this vehicle an easy top five. Unfortunately, because it doesn't feature that, it's just kind of a worse APC, a worse insurgent pickup custom. That's kind of how I look at it. Before we break into our first place pick, I wanted to showcase an honorable mention being the Dubachi Champion. The vehicle itself is a really good car. It's a supercar, and it's got really solid handling, but even more important than that, it features semi-bulletproof glass, which is nice. That means if you're shooting at the car, as you can see, it's pretty hard to actually break through that glass if you're trying to kill the person while they're driving past you on the road. But it's an Amani Tech vehicle, which means it can survive upwards of 12 homing missiles. Also, it has a missile lock-on jammer, and because of that, it's one of only two supercars that are Amani Tech, this, and the Ocelot Virtue. So, it is a pretty unique vehicle. The problem is, it's just too expensive. In the latest patches of the game, Rockstar increased its price tag to over $3 million if you don't have the trade price. And even if you do, it's around 2.8 mil. The problem is, that's not only $2.8 million you're going to be spending on this vehicle, but then an additional about probably 1.5 mil just on upgrading the car. And when you can buy the Buffalo STX, which features the exact same semi-resistant glass to bullets. It also features four seats instead of two, and better than all of that is the fact that it's got a higher top speed and better lap time. There's just really no reason to purchase this vehicle, which is why I'm considering it an incredibly overpriced car. It's not bad, and if you pick it up, you'll probably enjoy it. It's just, it's really disappointing to see Rockstar increase the price tag of this vehicle, yet they literally kept all the others the same, so it's just an indirect nerf. And to finish off today's video, we have the most expensive vehicle available in Grand Theft Auto Online, the Oppressor Mark II. The price tag of the Oppressor Mark II in the latest update was changed from around 4-ish million dollars to purchase, fully upgrade with the terabyte, to now sitting at a ridiculous 10 million dollars. Because first of all, it's 8 million dollars without the trade price, plus you gotta purchase the terabyte to upgrade and store it. Which means, yeah, you're gonna be looking at around 10 million dollars once you fully upgrade this vehicle, and and purchase the terabyte. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous, especially for a vehicle that really isn't all that special. The oppressor has been nerfed in so many different ways. First of all, the missiles are no longer the absolutely insane Mark II vi missiles that the Toreador, the Deluxo, Scramjet, or Vigilante carry. Because of that, this vehicle's missiles are pretty dang lame. Add that into the fact that your flares literally have like a 10 second cooldown, it means that now whenever a Deluxo is fighting you, or a Toreador, or literally anything that is in the sky, not only are your missiles probably probably going to miss whatever you're shooting at, but then you're just going to be absolutely obliterated by Deluxos or anything else. To be completely honest, the Oppressor Mark II, it's just, it's not good anymore. I mean, sure, it is a great vehicle for transportation, but if you're a new player, it's definitely not worth the 6 to $10 million price tag, depending if you have the trade price or not. I would highly suggest just to go to services, go to Kosatka, and request your Sparrow. Not only does it spawn right next to you, just like the Oppressor, but as well, it features unlimited missiles, there's no repair cost whatsoever, and when it gets blown up, it comes back in two minutes absolutely free of charge. I mean, I like the Oppressor. I really do. It's a fun vehicle, it gets the job done pretty well. But, as I said, this video is titled The Most Overpriced Vehicles, and $10 million for a flying bicycle, a broomstick essentially, is, is just not worth the price. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Let me know if you agree or disagree with what I have to say, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.